Okay, today we're going to be reviewing the installation of the base plate for a six inch post uh, going into bedrock. So we're going to go through the steps and demonstrate that if you have all the right tools and a few tricks that this can be installed um, with ease. So the first thing you want to do is the hammer drill that you're going to want to use is a full size uh, SDS plus. So we're using a 5 8 bit uh, to install our wedge anchors. So we have a 10 inch wedge anchor and we want to be a minimum uh, five inches into the bedrock. So that will ensure that um, we get the structural integrity of the bedrock anchor or what we call a wedge anchor and still have enough thread to protrude. Now, if we, you know, depending on the camera angle, it might be hard to see, but we have some elevation difference um, in the, uh, the base plate. So we're gonna wanna make sure that this is level and based on the elevation difference, we want to take that into consideration to ensure that we have enough uh, thread. So you would take your lowest corner, level off the base plate and measure that height. So in this case, we have two inches. So if I level this off, this corner here measures two inches. So given that I have a 10 inch uh, wedge anchor, that's still gonna leave me three inches of thread, which will allow me plenty to um, make any necessary small adjustments and to lock it down because we're using a double uh, washer and double nut application so that uh, the plate sits in between the two washers and that allows us to adjust it up and down to get it perfectly level. And the benefit of this system is that it's really easy to do with just the base plate and then we can slide in the post and know that it's gonna be perfectly level. All right, so one of the tricks you can do to ensure that your larger bit doesn't drift on you when you get started is you can use a, a quarter inch or three sixteenths bit and then get your center uh, point where you want it first. And that way your uh, larger bit won't drift on you. So we're gonna go ahead, drill this first one, um, get things lined up and then drill the rest of our pilots once we have our first anchor in. Okay, so now we've drilled a small little pilot and we'll proceed to use our SDS Max bit with our 5 8 bit and uh, drill that to full length. Now what's important to remember is when you're drilling, you wanna make sure you're drilling straight into uh, the ground. So you want to make sure you're uh, 90 degrees to um, the drill bit and the level plane. All right, so now that we've got our hole drilled, what we want to do is we want to, so if you've got compressed air or just any type of turkey baster or something to blow air down and get as much of the um, uh, rock dust and just get that out of there, get that hole nice and clean. Now, depending on the type of rock you're drilling, we're drilling granite here, so it's pretty, uh, pretty dense and hard. Um, you can also use an epoxy in combination with uh, your wedge anchor. So let's uh, measure the depth of the hole and see where we're at. We'll just use a wire. We'll stick it down and uh, we can measure that depth now. And we're about six inches, so that, that'll be perfect. So the other thing to keep in mind too is the, the mechanical wire, what you can do is if you run into a situation where your rock is, where you end up elongating the hole, so meaning that you were running your bit and the bit was running uh, elongated, wedge, opening up the hole, what you can do is take a piece of wire, bend it 90 degrees, cut it, and just stick that inside first and then hammer your wedge in and that'll take up any of the gap and ensure that that wedge is not going to come out or ever cause you any problem. We're getting ready to set our wedge anchor. You're going to want a sledgehammer or something with some robust weight behind it. And then our nut is we want to protect the, the, the threads and make sure that we don't uh, mushroom. And if we do end up mushrooming the end of the wedge anchor, well, at least we can pull the nut off and re-thread those threads. But if we just have it just slightly below, uh, that'll protect the threads and um, we shouldn't run into too many issues. 
So as you're, you're hammering it down, you'll know you hit bottom by it getting, you're gonna get a, a dense stop on the wedge anchor. So you're gonna keep going until that wedge anchor is in place. You're getting close there. There it is. We can hear that density. You want to demonstrate that again? Perfect. You can feel that, like the bounce of the hammer. Exactly. So we, we, we've bottomed what out. You're talking about. You can see how it, it got slightly a bit mushroomed. And that's why I wanted to leave my nut on there. So now um, I'll be able to pull this off. Now, if this also happened, uh, you could use a, uh, a side grinder and with a zip blade and cut that off clean. But in this case, what we can do is it's not too bad. We can uh, simply take um, a crescent wrench and just pull off that, that nut. And then it'll come off just like that. Okay, so now we'll take our, we need a lock washer. our washer. I set my base plate on. Now I can rotate it. You know, I had estimated where it was going to go before we drilled. I got it into the general area that I wanted to within, say, a quarter to a half inch. Because if you'll notice, what's featured on our bases is that we have them slotted. So you actually have a one inch slot. So you have some room to, uh, to play with in case that you're not exactly in the right, uh, the right area. So now that I've got my base set, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my uh, level. By eye, I can see it's pretty level. And I'm going to proceed again to drill uh, with my quarter inch bit the, um, the pilot holes so that I can remove this and, uh, and drill my holes. These are three quarter inch slots. So we have a little bit of play because we're using a five inch, five eighths drill. Uh, but we want to be careful with, uh, with our bit if we're going directly through the opening so we don't catch it or damage it. Um, that way. We've got our pilot bit approximately in the center of our uh, of our slot and it's hard to see with the camera but the rock is actually wasn't flat there so you know what we did is uh, we, we start the drill off on a bit of an angle and then we, we bring it up so that'll mark it. So we'll drill a little, we'll, yeah, if you want to demonstrate that there. We started like that and then slowly Okay, so we've got all of our little pilot holes drilled. And uh, what we'll do is now we're going to remove the plate and we know exactly where our uh, main drill hole or 5 8 holes are going to go. Okay, so we've got the second hole drilled. We're just going to blow it out. The last hole drilled, we got uh, three anchors in. We got the last hole drilled. And um, blow it out. Check my depth. There. Excellent. Got about six inches, six and a quarter there. And then now, once we get all four in, we'll set uh, our base plate back on. Okay, so the next step is, what we want to do is get the, um, the large uh, flat fender washers on. And what that's going to do is uh, allow us to set the uh, height of our, of our plate. So one of the things you can do is you can take a two foot level and get it approximately where you need to be with regards to um, your level and your bubble. And then you can do your final adjustments once you got your plate on. So you can 
simply right, these are the back we're directly the camera here is looking north and so we're sitting on the south side and so what I want to do is adjust these will be a little bit lower we can get these as close as possible to where they need to be. Okay, so now that we've got all our washers on and we've got the washers approximately where we need them to be as far as level with just using our initial uh, two foot level, um, we've got a pretty good uh, spot for it. Now we'll just drop the uh, base on. Everything should line up. Flat washers and the lock washers down, what we can do is take our time and we can level it by, you know, tightening the top or tightening the bottom, tightening the top, and that'll eventually get different locations and we can see that, you know, we get ourselves exactly where we need to be. We can also put it cross over side to side. And we can see there that we have it level. So that's uh, the process for installing the base plate. And um, if these are too long or you want to get them even, you can take a zip blade, cut them, and uh, that will uh, finalize the installation of the, uh, the base plate. All right, so we've got our basin. Two of us slid it in. And then there's an Allen screw here that you'll loosen off. And that Allen screw is just in place right now to spread um, the clamp so this piece of tubing on the base plate so by loosening that off we can see that it, um, it, hug it nice. yeah hugs it nice and tight and then we'll finish it off by tightening up the three bolts evenly now on the bottom of this base plate here there is a hole for drainage so any water that gets in there um, there's a two inch hole underneath this uh, base plate to ensure that uh, you know there's no standing water that can create rust and then we just leave the set screw there if ever you're working on this again or you need to remove the post, at least the set screw is there um, to uh, remove it. But once it's installed, usually you're not removing it. Better. So we're tightening it evenly. Good. There you go. And if you're not comfortable with using a... Um, an impact gun engaging the, the tension. So we can see the gap that I was talking about. That gap there is going to be about five eighths of an inch all the way uh, all the way down. 